Hello and welcome to the Utah Puck Report. I'm your host, Jay Stevens. We've got an awesome cast of hosts today and an awesome guest, so we're pretty lucky. Evan Stofflet, kind of kind of like the official other guy. Yeah, it's it's fun. I like to you know become a mainstay out here, so hopefully I can not mess up too bad and stay with it. Well, yeah. I don't know what the rules are, so you can just keep coming as long as I know. You just make them up then. Perfect. Uh, we also have Nick Fernelius, going to be one of our uh, our guests today. Good to be here again. Guest host, so I hope you got some creative questions. For our special guest from the Utah Grizzlies, Tegan Zahn. Glad to be here. Tegan, it's good to have you out, man. Like you're, uh, I've met you a few times. You've been in and out of the, the Grizzlies organization. And I, I want to talk to you about that because that's, that's you're in a unique spot where you were here and then you were the enemy. Yeah. And now you're back. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Uh, like you said, I was here what was it six years ago uh, i was on contract with uh, norfolk in the ahl so i got sent down here i enjoyed it here um ended up signing in colorado was there for four years and then uh, once they become became an ahl team had to find a different spot to play so i knew tim i i knew the organization and uh, i I got an opportunity and I pounced on it right away. Really, I thought you'd. I thought maybe they just reassigned you here. I didn't know that you came over as a free agent. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I came over as a free agent. Uh, won the Kelly Cup in Colorado that year, and they were moving up to the AHL, so I had to find a new place to play. And uh, Tim actually offered me uh, a player coach role last year so that's what i was i was a player coach kind of get my foot in the door that's yeah. what i want to do when i'm done so it was a good opportunity and uh i i enjoy it here and uh i'm glad to be here so how's that going to work for you this year being the player coach like how do you decide if you're in the lineup or on the bench um it well, it's going to depend on injuries. Like, if there's a lot of injuries, I'll probably be playing more than yeah. coaching. But, uh, like, right now our team's pretty healthy, so I'm going to be – I might not play as many games and get to experience what it's like to uh, – what goes beyond, on behind the scenes, basically. Yeah, because you guys are pretty healthy right now yeah. and pretty deep. Yeah. Man, it's – it's been blowing my mind seeing some of the points that you guys are putting up this year. Yeah, we have uh, we have four healthy lines up front, and I think we have eight D men. So oh. right now we're we're healthy, and uh, we have a very good team. I mean, our record might not show it right now, but uh, when you see us in the long run, we're, we'll we'll have an exciting team. Yeah, there's no doubt. Like when you see like that is it Josh Dickinson? Yeah, Josh. what is he? He's tearing it up. Oh yeah, he had. Uh, couple back-to-back hat tricks uh what was it a couple weeks ago yeah uh very skilled forward um he's an exciting player that's for sure yeah, i think he had a like a five point night against allen or something yeah. it was unreal yeah all right so i i do want to talk more about that but i also want to get to know you a little bit more and uh we just because that's the one thing is you guys come in and we don't really get a chance to know you right and I, that's the one thing the show's really been able to do is you know we get to know can switch a little bit more some of us more than we probably should or, or want to. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, and then Tim's been in a few times. And are you the captain this year? I'm not. Taylor Richard is. Oh, Taylor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Taylor's a good dude. He's a good leader. Yeah. Uh, so where are you from originally? I'm from uh, Bethune, Saskatchewan. So it's uh, like 45 minutes northwest of Regina. Okay. Um, and then for everybody else in Utah, you're going to have to tell. What's Regina 45 minutes away from? So they know. Uh, it's like an hour. Uh, well, it's just, a couple hours, uh, I guess, north of the United States border, basically. So pretty close. Yeah, yeah. So and then you grew up playing hockey there. And then when did you leave home to play? Or where where did you play your youth hockey? I grew up playing in Bethune up until my, uh, what was it, Bantam year, which I would have been 14, I guess, and then moved away. I went to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, and played my second year Bantam there. Uh, that was basically the draft year, like leading up into the draft year for the WHL, so I wanted to get a little more exposure, better hockey. So I went to Moose Jaw, played there. Um, then following that, I got drafted in the first round in the WHL to Saskatoon Blades. And so I had to play one more year of midget in Moose Jaw, Midget AAA, and then I was five years in the WHL with Saskatoon. 
Wow. Yeah. And then were you drafted in the NHL? Or did you? I was actually very rare, but I was drafted <laughs> twice. I got oh, drafted the, uh, the eighteen twenty two. I got eight. Uh, I got drafted at eighteen, and out of juniors, you basically have two years to sign a contract, or your rights get like you get put back in the draft, basically. Yeah. And my second year uh, that they had my rights, they I ended up breaking my leg, so I only played like half that season, and I didn't end up signing with them. So I re-entered the draft and got drafted in the seventh round by Tampa Bay. Who drafted you the first time? Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Very uh, rare. <clears throat> yeah, that is rare. Yeah. You, I, you hear about it every once in a while, and I, I knew it was because somebody just did it recently. They. But they refused to sign. Yeah. And then yeah. reentered. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. And then, uh, so you go with Tampa Bay. How do you end up in Utah? Uh, so I end, I didn't end up signing an NHL contract at all. I went back and played my overage year in Saskatoon. Um, from there, I think I got a tryout with the Kings. Didn't impress anybody, I guess. And ended <laughs> up going back to, I did one year of Canadian uh, University, the CIS it's called. Um had a decent year. Decided school wasn't for me though, so I uh, I ended up signing uh, American League two way with uh, Oklahoma City and ended up in Stockton at the time. Okay. And then what else? Um, the following year, I signed uh, American League one way with Norfolk, and that's when I got sent down to Utah. All right. So if you're on a one way and you get sent down, you're still making. Good money. Yeah. yeah, good money. Yeah, can't complain. <laughs> yeah, that's no, no housing fun. expenses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Um, so what what was your first thought when you come to Utah? Had you heard stuff about Utah before? Uh obviously the year of prior I was in Stockton, so we played Utah a couple times and I knew they had an unreal uh facility. Um I didn't really know much about Salt Lake City or anything like that, so it was a little bit eye opening when I when I did come here to play. Um, but overall, I love it. I love it here. So yeah, yeah. What kind of culture shock do you go through? So like, like what things? And just be as blunt as possible. What? Because we can edit it out later. <laughs> what kind of things kind of caught you off guard when you first moved here? Or what what shocked you? Well, it was more like you want to go have a team party and just the rules on being out at the bar and what when, what you can do, what you can't do. Yeah. For me, like I can, normally you can go around and get in with a Canadian ID. Not here. You have to have your passport with you. Stuff like that. Just a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the religious part of it was yep. a little bit different. Um, other than that, that was, that was the biggest culture shock, I guess, was just the bars and the religion, I do you, Evan, when, when guys come in, when you were with the Grizzlies, did you kind of like, all right, I'm going to intercept this guy and tell him, like, give him a lowdown on Utah? Not so much. It was kind of fun to see him discover it on their own. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I liked about it. But um, you know, there's always grumbles and gripes, like, oh, you know, last call is 1 o'clock, stuff like yeah. that. But you kind of get used to it, and it just becomes part of your everyday. Yeah. Every, you know, that's just, just what you got to deal with. So that's it is right. what it is. Yeah. You got to plan around it a little bit. Yeah. Like, did you did you guys have like out of out of state or out of country guys coming to the U? Like, they had to go through that. Oh yeah, for sure. A lot of East Coast guys, and uh, definitely had to give them the lowdown on what you can, what you can't do, what to expect a little bit when you're going out, that yeah. kind of stuff. So for sure. You know, we had um, when the Grizzlies were in the AHL, we had uh, Trevor Daly. I think he's with Detroit now. I know he's still in the NHL, but I'm not yeah, sure where. I think it's Detroit. I think he's with Detroit. And uh, he stayed with us for a little bit, but he uh, he told me, he's like, it took a lot of getting used to. Like, his, he wasn't even here a full season, I don't think, or maybe, I don't know. But he was telling me, he's like, it took a little getting used to, used to but he's like, uh, undercover, Utah and Boise are two of the best places mm-hmm. I've ever been. He's like, I, and he's a Toronto guy, right? Yeah. And he's like, I love it here. He's like, I had to get used to the rules. He's like, but you have beautiful women. And he loved the mountains and just being able to go out and do stuff. He's like, it's just different than Toronto. Mm-hmm. He's like, once he got, he's like, I think I'm going to retire here. Of course, that was 15 years ago, and he's been in several other cities since then. But it's uh, it's good to hear that from a guy that's, you know, 
he was definitely a clubber and definitely somebody that enjoyed a night out. There's a lot to offer here, yeah. kind of different things, you know, you, the outdoorsy, the mountains. If you like that, Vegas is, what, a five-and-a-half-hour drive, so yeah. it's yeah. easy to shoot down there to get your fix. Yeah, four-and-a-half in the juke. No, yeah. guess not. <laughs> Put it in turbo and <laughs> yeah, away you go. <laughs> uh, so, so, Tegan, you you, uh, you have a couple years here, and you, I remember it because I was on the bench quite a bit, I think. Yeah. And uh, you were definitely a crowd favorite here. Yeah. And uh, and you know you are. Like, you know when you're you're the guy that's being requested for all the, you know, public, you know, whatever, going out in public and, yeah. and doing all the work out. And you seem to enjoy that role, too. You you always seem to be the one that was good to go out, and you went to all the, you know, primary children's and yeah. all that stuff. And uh, the crowd loved you. And then you left. And then you come back in the rival's jerseys. And I saw – and then I'm still on the bench for the – Grizzlies, and I'm seeing, like, the Grizzlies fans are pretty mellow, but they actually had signs. Did oh, you yeah. see the signs oh, against yeah. you and stuff? Oh, yeah. You'd see them up against the glass and warm ups. You just got to laugh at it, though. Like, yeah. what can you do about it? Yeah. You, you embrace it. You're... Makes it fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you were, you were pretty physical then, too. So, like, it seemed like when you were here the first time, you were playing more of a yeah. skill game, yeah. and then you went more physical. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I... Uh, I had to change my role a little bit. Uh, when I went to Colorado, I became a little bit more of uh, in-your-face, aggressive, might have to fight. And yeah. uh, I feel like that the second go-around here, that's why the fans like me that much, is because last year there wasn't that many fights, and I was in quite a few of them, <laughs> if there were. So, yeah, yeah that, uh, that makes it easy to be one of the crowd favorites, I guess. If you'll fight, favorite. yeah. Yeah. So was that something you had in your game before? Like, had you uh, you played in the dub? There's... Yeah, yeah. When I played in the WHL, I was a stay-at-home defenseman, like I am now. Um, it was more when I went to call like the university that I I kind of realized like it was a little bit easier, and I could try to I guess improve my skills a little bit. So for three years, I improved my skills, and then I kind of. As I got older, I went back to the way I was in junior, more stay at home and uh, more physical and more in your face, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. And, and that's and that's how you like to play now? Yeah. That's that's your game? Yeah, I love it. I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't change it for anything. Now, yeah. Yeah. Um, so how is it now? Because do you remember the fans that were holding the signs against you before? Oh, yeah. I, and fan, now, you, now you see them now? Or? Yeah, fans, you, like, last year they'd come up to me after jersey signings or anything like that, and be, they'd laugh and say, oh, did you see my sign from a couple years ago? And I'd just have to laugh at it and say, <laughs> yeah, I remember it. you got to love it, though, yeah. I mean, because they're, they're hockey fans, oh, yeah. and, and it's – that's the one good thing is we do have a core of fans that yeah. do get into it and they do know who you are That's and right. cuz you get there's another couple thousand people in that building that don't they don't pay attention to yeah. anything. Well, that's the atmosphere you want too. It's I mean it adds for the home team yeah. cuz the fans get riled. Yeah. The away team loves it cuz they can kind of give it back and yeah. forth with them so and it just creates a fun place to be for top down fans to players because you've been that before too you were like one of our captains here you were you had an a on your jersey and then the next season you're playing against us mm-hmm. and, got traded oh yeah it was actually weekend so i got traded on a wednesday and then basically followed the bus to bakersfield to play <laughs> against utah and then the following week bakersfield was in utah so my first oh, yeah. three or four games was against the team i literally just played for yeah so that was fun <laughs> It's weird. I don't really so uh, you know obviously being an e bug you don't have that much experience in any of that stuff. I only had it when I went from Weber to the U, and it went it it still had it like I still had a bunch of people chanting against me when I came back. It it, it broke my heart. I played at Weber for four years, and I came back with the U, and they were all chanting against me. But energizing, yeah. Yeah. But being a goalie, they always chant against you no matter what. So <laughs> I got it, it's part. It's something you get used to, but. Um, I just thought it was – it's so – maybe it's not rare because a lot of East Coast League guys go – they're you know, on multiple teams. Yeah. But, but the the role you played, because you were definitely the fan favorite, and then you were definitely the most hated. In, like, 
Grizzlies fans would talk about it all the time. They didn't care about any of the other teams. And Idaho's rivalry took a backseat to Colorado for a while. Yeah. Because of you, mainly. And you got in some pretty dirty scraps, pretty nasty scraps back in the... I remember when, like watching you play. I'm like, I, oh, I know Tegan from before and whatever. And then the, the very next year, you're like, you were definitely way more physical and definitely in everybody's face. And yeah. I was like, wow, I didn't know that of him. He was pretty intense. So that's cool. So um, speaking of all that, the games that we've had this year, um, very physical. Lots of... Uh, is that... Something new is that just the new East Coast League? Is that something new with the Grizzlies roster? Uh, I wouldn't say it's with our roster. I mean, I feel like the last couple of years we've had uh, a little bit more of a rival rivalry against uh, Rapid City. Yeah, and that's who we played the, this past weekend. So you saw a lot of penalty minutes that weekend. Um, the sta- the standard in hockey right now it's uh they're kind of nitpicky on like slashing penalties and stuff like that so there's a lot more minors going on so yeah, yeah. well i noticed a lot more i mean there was a couple of pretty good tilts against rapid city yeah and i think with idaho too right uh yeah uh we have a guy patty mcgrath he's uh he's a little uh, spark plug he'll he'll basically fight anybody and he's been in i think three fights right already this year so and what do you guys have six games seven yeah six games yeah, yes. yeah. oh yeah he's gonna wear himself I out know. <laughs> well there's a new there's a new uh rule this year where you can get into i think it's 10 and then you get suspended a game and, uh, and then after that? after 14 you get suspended two games or something like that oh wow yeah. they did yeah, in the I american was, league a couple years yeah. ago right no yeah i don't know if they're just trying it out or what what the plan is but yeah it's a that's bit frustrating different. i never thought that would trickle down to the coast just because i mean that's that's a lot of tickets yeah <laughs> that's yeah exactly well and it's as much as they try to to stop fighting in hockey and you'll hear this this statement all the time is I get people asking me for tickets or I'll give you know we'll get winners from the show that have never been to a game before or whatever and then they just the next comment back is like there were fights it was so awesome like they just it's part of the game oh yeah it's it's the entertainment value of the, of coming to a game right you get to see guys fight I and yeah. you don't get to see that very often you can't just go fight a guy on the street like you get to <laughs> that's frowned you, upon exactly yeah. so it's a visceral experience to see <laughs> well, that competition yeah. and that much passion in something yeah. it's and you watch soccer or well most people don't watch soccer but Like, if you watch a soccer game or you watch a basketball game and you got somebody running their mouth or they act like they're hurt, it's like in hockey, if you dive like that, you're going to take a beating. You're going to lose a tooth or two if you play like that. And that's good to see you see people held accountable. Yeah. And I don't want to see that change from the game. I don't want to see a ton of guys getting concussions and and costing them. Because, you know, we're like, I'm friends with George Peros who is literally one of the smartest guys I've ever known in my life. And when you talk to him on the phone, you would never know what you, the other end of the phone looks like because he's he's so smart. Right. He's such a genius. And he had a long career in the NHL, but he could have had a lot longer career had he not suffered so many concussions from eating fists. And the last one was from just a fluke. I don't know if you guys seen that. He He just he fell weird. Trying to punt, he was still winning the fight and just fell weird and then smacked his head on the ice and that was the end of his career. That's so, what ended my season last year. I got in a fight and my head bounced off the ice. Really? That's, yeah. Jeez. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I don't like it's. I don't want to see it go away from the game. I don't want to see guys' careers cut short from concussions. But there's got to be a balance. Is the balance the ten game and then you get suspended? I I don't think it is. Like personally, I think. Um, like obviously, you see fighting in hockey is obviously went way down. Oh, yeah. It's it's more of having guys out there to more or less, I guess, police the game. Like if there's a dirty hit, like someone's got to step up and might have to do something about it, right? And right. I think that's the way it should be. Like if I'm going to deliver a dirty hit, well, I might have to fight because of it. Yeah. So and it should be that way. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't want to, but it also sucks. I, I, was it the WHL? There was a pretty dirty hit, and the guy went to stick up for the 
for his guy and then just got immediately knocked out too. <laughs> so you got to send the yeah, right guy. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of teams don't have the right guy anymore. A lot of you don't have a George Peros right. anymore or you know Clifford, he's not like those guys that's a dying breed. Mm-hmm. You have you usually have a a play well like a guy that has a level of talent and then will still fight. That's I think that's the role you fill. Yeah. You, you definitely have you can be out in any situation. You're a power play penalty kill guy, but you'll also fight. Yeah, I think that's more or less what it's coming to now is you got to still be like you got to be able to play the game you got to be able to move you got to be able to you got to have some skill in your game you can't just be basically a one trick pony you got to go out there and yeah. have something else in your game and have that edge to you yeah cuz we had when I I sent a bunch of games with the Idaho Steelheads and we had that Jeremy Yablonski he could Real. not turn left <laughs> yeah. he he was a uni turner he could only go one way yeah. And I've never seen that in that league. And he knew it, and everybody would make fun of him for it, but it you would make fun of him oh. from the other <laughs> of, uh, distance. Because yeah. that dude was a monster. Mm-hmm. He was built like a pyramid upside down. Like, he just... And he was such a good fighter. Yeah. Because you couldn't hurt him. But anyway, guys like that, I, 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 you just don't see him anymore. You're right. You have to be able to, to play the game. And But a lot of the guys that can play the game don't want to fight. That's right, yeah. So, what else do we have to look forward to with your team this year, do you think? Uh, like I said, we're, we're very skilled. Uh, I think we're, once we get into the groove a little bit, uh, we'll we'll have something special here, that's for sure. So, hopefully we can uh, start turning around soon and get on the right foot. Yeah. How do you, um, is Hunter Miska still up or is he back? He's up right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't look into it to see why. I, I, I don't know how long he's going to be gone. I'm pretty excited about seeing him play. I talked to Tim about it. Tim and I had disagreements on because I was told by other by goalie people that Hunter Misk is a goalie of the future. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's right or wrong, and I don't know how he ended up here or whatever, but I'm excited to see him play. And you, you guys have depth at all positions. And... Uh, yeah, it's a bumpy start so far, yeah. but when you see a guy putting up as many points, like it's just unreal the the, the scoring potential that's there. Yeah, we have, uh, like you said, our depth is is real. Like it's unbelievable. We have four lines that can all play. We have eight D men that can all play. We right now, well, we have two goalies with Mishka up. Uh, once he comes down, we have three good goalies. Uh, we will be exciting. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, do you have any more questions? Uh, I just kind of want to get into the, the player coach thing. Um, it, I played for, I've won player assistant coach, and the only time he kind of went in was when our head coach got kicked off the ice, and then it was deer in the headlights. Yeah. So he suddenly had to kind of run everything. Um, how has that, I guess, transition been where you had that role last year, but this year it's kind of maybe 60 coach, 40 player, kind of a split like that? Uh, I'm not sure like exactly on how much I'll play. Um, as of right now, it's, uh, I mean, wait and see, basically. You know how it is in the ECHL yeah. level. I mean, injury, like guys get called up, guys get sent down, things Pretty happen quick. quick. So, I mean, you could go from having too many, like sitting out three guys to being short three guys in a weekend. So right now, I mean practice i'm practicing as a player um i haven't went on the band i well, i guess preseason i went on the like behind the bench to coach um but aside from that i haven't been behind the bench in any of the games i'm more of like an eye in the sky mm-hmm. watching the game from up top and then i'll go report to tim and uh ryan during the intermissions on what i see what we can change stuff like that um what else roles that I do for the player coach is uh, I'm doing more video this year okay. a lot of clipping what we're going to see out of this say this weekend we play Idaho so I'll be clipping what we'll see five on five penalty kill power play stuff like that to kind of show the show the team how's uh, the relationship with the players because obviously you're, you're a player but you're a coach like it's kind of a weird in between how is that yeah it's it's weird um I mean, it's a little easier now. Like, 
just because I played so many games la- like I played every game last year and I was a player coach mm-hmm. like tech I wasn't supposed to be doing that but we we're just we we're always short so I had to play um so it's a little easier this year where I can ease back on playing and do more of the coaching the guys in the room still know I'm a player coach and but they like they treat me just <laughs> just the same as uh, any other player okay yeah it's a, it's always a unique dynamic and in the, the UK, it used to be big. There was player head coaches. Right. So, I mean, that was kind of all there was, and they've kind of phased away from that. And you don't see it as much now in the in the East Coast as you did before. And it's, it's I don't know if it's just unique to hockey. I feel like it's not one of those things that's in other sports. And it's just, it's kind of a weird middle ground where you can, uh, it's, it's just really interesting to me. Yeah, it is. Um, I think you, well, we might have saw it a little bit few years ago because some of the teams only had one mm-hmm. coach right in the at this level they would only have a head coach and they would sign a guy as a player coach just to have someone else to speak up behind the bench or on the bench even so uh, the reggie dunlop yeah. that's what isn't yeah. that what it's called yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Just, I feel like that'd be so hard to manage a team and focus on what you need to do yeah. to help that team and well, and to stay physically ready, like to it's it's a different mindset for sure. Yeah, I mean, because you say you're practicing, that was going to be my question. Do you practice? But when you practice, do you uh, you want to coach too, right? And you want to help run drills and practice. And your mind has. To, we talked uh, with with Nick earlier. We were talking about uh, changing that mindset and looking at things at a, from a different perspective. But you could, you're going to be thrown into a game. Oh, exactly. So that like for you me, got, I just got to be prepared to play when I got to play basically so like right now if I'm not playing like I'm still doing skates with the scratches that aren't playing like stuff like that I get like you gotta stay in shape and be ready when I guess I'm called upon yeah yeah that's tough yeah well I mean that's that's been my whole life is (laughs) skating with the scratches skating with the scratches (laughs) being ready for that once one or one call every 200 games but yeah it's I mean that's that's a hard mindset to be in, and that's but that's a, a great opportunity, and that's that's good for you that you get to get this experience. and And uh, do you think this is your last year as a player? I thought last year was going to be one of my last years, but uh, ended up coming back for one more. Yeah. Got sucked in for one more. <laughs> um, I just thought. Like, last year was hard because I played all the games. I didn't really get to experience like being being the player coach so yeah. I, so i got offered it again and I, I jumped on it knowing that i probably wouldn't play as much this year so did you sit down with tim before and say like hey last year was great but this year i want this year i'm hoping to grow on that yeah even last year like after we lost in the playoffs uh year end meeting i talked to him about it a little bit and just i like i enjoyed the role last year but i didn't really get to experience it to its fullest I guess because I played so much like it's hard to when you're playing that much to to manage it and uh so I think this year will be a good opportunity to see like what goes on behind the scenes like I didn't realize like how much paperwork you got to have like getting Canadians down here you got to have the right visa work visas you got to have your rosters every Monday like send into the league every Monday there's you gotta like there's a salary cap so you gotta be under that there's a lot of stuff that you gotta you got that comes into play so uh. that was a lot to learn for sure and that's it's i don't know learn it the right way tim's tim's the right person to teach you i've seen a lot of guys that uh run it the wrong way but it's good to see you're learning it the right way and that you're going to get these opportunities and and uh man I'm, i'm hoping this is a this is a really big year for everybody, and yeah. that uh, you know maybe there's a big offer on the end of, other end of the table for you to, at the end of the season to coach somewhere. Yeah, that'd be unreal. Then that's what I'm. That's what my ultimate goal is. I want when I'm done, I want to step in and become either assistant coach, head coach, whatever it may be. But uh, I feel like this is a good opportunity and uh, the right opportunity for me to get my foot in the door and uh, get prepared to do what I want to do when I'm done playing. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, we, we want to have you back in at some point during the, the season and check in with you and see how that's all going and how you're, how you're balancing things like 30, 40 games in. 
yeah, I'd love to be back. All right, cool. Any questions for you guys? I'm good for now. It's nice to meet you finally on the yeah. on the same side, I guess. Yeah, after. that's right. I think I yeah, I would have played against you in yeah. Stockton and Colorado, so yeah. it's a small world with hockey, so it's always nice to kind of meet an old foe. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, here's your chance. Yeah, I am curious. Uh, you know, playing on the U, I had a few teammates that I had that transitioned to being assistant coaches um, and even now the head coach. Uh, as a player for the Grizzlies and then transitioning to a player coach, you know, kind of piggybacking on Evan's relationship question, do you find yourself kind of having to manage, you know, when you're hanging out with the players or, or do you hang out with the players a lot on the weekends kind of thing? Because I know a lot of the my teammates that transitioned to being an assistant coach, they had to sort of manage that as far as coming out to, to hang out with the boys and, and party and that kind of thing. Uh, I wouldn't say so much, like, um... Like I still hang out with the guys. I'll go when we're when we're on a road trip. I'll go eat with them. I'll hang out with them. Um, the only thing, honestly, that's changed for me is I'm staying a little bit later at the rink after practice, doing video clips, stuff like that. Video where they clips were, and paperwork. Yeah, where they get to go home and do whatever they got to do. I got to stay at the rink a little bit longer to help out. That's basically the only change that I've really seen. Oh, uh, paperwork, man. <laughs> Got to do it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, as a paramedic, every call I go on, it's it's a 22-page report that I got to do. Every call. Paperwork's just part it's of tedious. being, you know, it's part of being a grown-up, I guess. <laughs> but that's cool. Tegan, we're, we're excited, man. I'm, I'm excited that when you came back to Utah, and I know the fans were super excited to have you back, and uh, best of luck this season. We're ex- uh, it's I'm going to be at some games. Evan and I are going to be there. We're going to do some broadcasts from the games. And uh, I know, Nick, you're going to be there too. I'll be there. So uh, good luck. Anything else you want to say to anybody before you go out? No, not really. I just appreciate having me on. And uh, like I said, I I hope we can uh, fill up the Maverick Center and uh, get a lot of fans out there because we're we're going to have an exciting team this year. I believe it, man. Everything I've every indication is there that this is going to be an exciting team. I mean, you guys are putting up a ton of points. I know that uh, as the season progresses here in the next couple weeks, I think things will tighten up. You guys will f- have figured out the each other and the lines and the systems will will click. And I think it's going to be it's going to be an exciting year. So let's do it. Let's fill up the Maverick Center and let's get everybody out and catch a Grizzlies game. You want to watch hockey? Everybody that's listening to this loves hockey. So uh, we've got we've got college, we've got high school, and of course, if you're going to really go watch pro hockey, go watch these guys that have already played college and. And they're battling to get up there with the avalanche. And uh, Tegan, thanks for being here. Nick, Evan, you guys Thank were you. awesome. Always good to be here. And uh, that is the Utah Puck Report. <laughs>